All right, it's tequila time. Steve's getting into the whiskey. Every now and then, someone accuses me of being an alcoholic. I just want to say, we opened up these bottles for our 400th episode. This is now the 413th. Yeah. And there's there's only that much of this bottle gone. Only that much of that bottle gone. I think we're doing all right. <laughs> I don't think we have a... Uh, if you were an alcoholic, these wouldn't survive as shared bottles. No, they wouldn't survive they wouldn't this. wouldn't be show bottles. You would have cheated and been like, I don't know. What, my kid my kid broke the bottles. <laughs> no, I'm like... It's, I'm, alcohol, not even, I'm not even joking. Like, that's... Right. Alcoholism isn't funny. And if... if, if if you have troubles with that, I hope you find the the help that you need. But Steve and I, uh, I, I hope we don't have that problem. I know that I don't. Cheers, Steve. Um, uh, I'm harmonizing. <laughs> I'm harmonizing. I watched... Uh, I watched Tyler Larson music is win. And I've learned that the secret to John Mayer tone is that he does all these like quarter bends. He does quarter note bends. So that uh-huh. I was doing that with my voice. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was, it was just a lot louder than what I was doing. <laughs> and it came on very strong and very fast. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, a couple weeks ago, January 7th, a couple weeks ago, Guitar Center came out with their 13 musical trends of 2022. They emailed this to me and I immediately they, they emailed it to you. They emailed it to me. And I immediately sent Steve the link because like, here's a topic. Let's talk about this. I didn't even read through all that. I was just like, Guitar Center is dropping some hot predictions on us. Let's talk about it on the podcast. Uh, number one, high performance electric car, good high performance electric cars. <laughs> Uh, high performance electric guitars become more affordable. You know, this is such an innovation considering that just only a few years ago we were all relying on diesel guitars. <laughs> uh, yeah, like where it become more affordable, like there's been a ton that it almost because this is Guitar Center, it almost feels like this is hinting at a product that they know is coming out. Right. They're like, here it is, the high performance electric guitar. We told you it would be more affordable. And it's gonna be like, oh, there's you know, a more to, more affordable affordable version of like a Jackson or something. Well, it kind like of that. it kind of makes you wonder how many of these I don't think actually you know, I don't know that these certainly these are these might be products that launched like late 2021 that they're trying to move. Sure. That's a cynical way of thinking about it. But one of the things they mentioned is like, you can get a roasted maple neck on like anything. And it roasted maple neck used to be like a premium. A high end. It was like, a, I associate in my head, roasted maple necks with TMG. And like we, we, you know, we're starting to see stainless steel or claims of stainless steel popping onto more affordable yeah. guitars. So maybe, you know, they're probably not wrong going that direction. And there's a lot of young people out there and a lot of players out there who are trying to emulate, you know, the modern versions of shredders and, you know, these virtuosos and stuff like that. So there's always been a market for there to be affordable versions of very high performance guitars, which which is what kind of makes me laugh at this a little bit do you because have there's, a, do you there's have always a, been that do you have a squire contemporary i used to but i gave it away remember i i did all those modifications to it and then i uh i did a contest for it oh but that was the telecaster right it was the telecaster that was the older version but this is talking about how the newer ones the 2021 models the ones where the strat has like this one yeah i really wanted to those, try one the, of those that's a maple neck or a roasted maple neck on a sub 500 dollars guitar yeah and they were cheaper before they raised prices. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny, you know, like at this point, like this first point seems a little bit silly and funny considering recently there's been a lot of belly aching on the online community about a bunch of brands and retailers raising prices to keep right. up with, you know, the right. sudden inflation that we're all dealing with. And so now it's like high performance electric guitars become more affordable uh, you're a little uh, rough first prediction there, Guitar Center. Number two, back in the spotlight, lap steel and resonators. Pass. I, boring. I've always wanted a resonator. Uh, 
And I know that acoustics like are a, boring. Like a square neck resonator? Or? No, no. One that's playable is a guitar. Like, I don't I don't want to do slide, but I, I always wanted, like, a fun resonator guitar for playing around the house and making, you know, like, those 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 lo-fi sorts yeah. of acoustic sounds. They're, they're, they're okay. They're, they're fun. Fine. But it's they're like, fun. if you don't need them... They're a, they're a good change of pace. If you don't need them for your recording or your sound or your band or whatever... It's just kind of a novelty to have around and like, do I want to commit to a novelty or do I want to make resonator guitars like my thing, you know? So this is, this like, is, like I want to have a resonator guitar for like the, the, the once a year I go to a cabin and, and right. hang out in the woods, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and pretend that, you know, if I had a friend with a banjo, we could jam, but I don't have a friend with a banjo when I go to the cabin, I'm all alone. <laughs> Time to teach someone in your family banjo. I know, right? It's not hard. Just get a six-string banjo. Problem solved. I feel like a regular banjo is e- easier than a six-string banjo. Not if you, someone in your, then you're like multi-purposing because then you're just teaching someone in your it's family a, you guitar. Can, you know that you can just bar chord an entire, you can just bar an entire fret on a banjo and that's a chord, right? I don't know anything about banjos. I just told you something about banjos. Now you know something about banjos. I know one thing about banjos. <laughs> and it's all, it's all right-hand technique. For getting like the fancy picking. I mean, obviously there's left hand technique as well mm-hmm. as you get more advanced, but like you can teach someone a song on banjo with just like, here's your three frets. Just move between these in this order okay. and, you know, pluck away, do whatever the go. heck you want. Number three is bases with built in drive. I disagree with this one. It's based on one model, which was the it's Ernie, based on. Er, er, Ernie ball music man, dark Ray, which is $2,700. It's a music man. It's a, Music Man Stingray with a built-in dark glass preamp. I just, I don't think this specifically is something that people... Is that the, a signal path that most bassists would want is a drive before they're hitting, say, their compressor or even the EQ in their amp? Maybe. I mean, this could give you the opportunity to have like your onboard fuzz and then you just run it to a... DI to the board or whatever. I guess so. Ultra, ultra compact rig. Uh, I just don't. I mean, there are plenty of bases that like to just show up and plug direct into the PA. Yeah. And you don't even need a preamp for that. You could just. Right. But if you want drive, if you want drive sounds, I could see it being a thing. Yeah. It just seems like a, it, a lot of this list so far feels like we know about a product that's doing well. Here's our prediction. That I don't this even, product will I don't do, even know continue that continue to do well in the next quarter and quarters to come after like the two weeks when the dark ray was like initially announced and all the demos were going about after that, I didn't hear about them ever again. Right. So I kind of question it's this. It's not one. like it's become the thing. Every, every, yeah. every everyone wants it, Number four is every guitarist wants a bass. Damn it. It's true. It's true. Damn it. <laughs> They got me. <laughs> I've got a bass now, and I've I've got the bass because I've been thinking about getting a Longhorn, and that's been that's basically I don't want to call it my training wheels. Basically, but that's, that's been <laughs> damn it. That's been me testing <laughs> gotcha, out to, bitch. to figure out if I do want to commit to getting a Longhorn. Is me messing around with that bass? Okay, damn, <laughs> damn it, Guitar Center. Okay, they got me. <laughs> I mean, I think it is. Sm- I think it is smart for guitarists to explore other stringed fretted instruments because it's easy for you to, to pick them up and explore them. I'm not saying everyone should pick them up and master them, but I think it's, it's good to pick them up and understand what other instruments do and figure out, you know, how to play along to songs with different instruments so that you can relate to your bandmates and stuff like that. But damn it. I, I hate that they called one that, that I did. Number five, a new phase beyond the route. There's pedals other than the rat. Uh, so apparently, I, I guess basically they're calling 2021 in a roundabout way. They don't is are they calling it the year of the phaser? The year of the rat. Oh, okay. And they're saying 2022. So 2021, uh, you've got the rat Spain and the pack rat, and mm-hmm. were the two I think big rat. I have pedals. a theory about all the rat pedals and all the drive pedals that came out. Uh huh. Um, in 2021, it's there, there was. Major like component issues, like component sourcing issues uh-huh. for like chipsets and stuff like that, and like digital components. And I think a lot of pedal builders were like, "Well, I can't get the thing I was planning on building. What can I build? What can I get components for? Uh, let's make a rat." 
I haven't made a rat in a while. And I think that's why we saw so many rats and drive style pedals like dirt style pedals come out where the trend had been for the years leading up to that is much more involved like digital pedals and pedals with a lot more like heavy components right, stuff going on. Right. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That's my theory. Idea. I haven't taught, I could talk to builders and ask them, Hey, does this theory check out? But I'd rather have the idea and not know the truth. You well, th- so this is saying that they think 2022 is going to be the year of the phaser. There's a new MXR so, so phaser. So they do. Th- they are calling it the year of the phaser. The, 2022, a- not 2020. Aaron Abubo. Finally. Guitar Center is calling 2022 the year of the phaser. Do you agree or do you not? I think he was trying to get year of the phaser started in like 2019. <laughs> like 2018. <laughs> Yeah, they say, we think a prime candidate for the next resurgence in this area is another vintage sound, the phaser pedal. It makes me wonder what they... Okay, so modern user... Okay, the new MXR Deep Phase and JHS 3 Series. Excellent starting point. So they're calling out uh, phasers that just came out. But it makes me... It honestly makes me wonder if they're, like, saying, hey, we know we know that, you know, the they, manufacturers are telling us that they, they want us to they, order a bunch of phasers. They just know what they have a lot in stock. Right. They know what's coming in because they already ordered a bunch of it. Like, guys, phasers are going to be a big deal because we just ordered 20 pallets of phasers, so I hope you guys buy them. A model for the future of amps is number six. Uh, and this one is... I, I read this one before, and I didn't really understand it i think they're basically saying the tone they think the fender tone master is setting a press set a precedent for being able to basically I, and i don't know how the tone master technology works uh it says these amp you these amps use the unquestionable accuracy of fenders digital modeling but they present them in a package that looks exactly like the amp uh being modeled so basically what they're what they're getting at is instead of buying a you know a line six whatever and switching like like a spider you've got all these different settings or or and you know they're for different amps is you're just buying one amp that has one really good model right. built into it and, and that, in some ways i don't i don't think that's going to be i I, I think it works with these Fender amps and the Tone Master series because so many of them, they, they do have an iconic sound and there are nuances between like a Princeton and a Deluxe and a Super and all these different things. And then uh, particularly as you move up and have more speakers, you're also like adding on to that weight and all that stuff. But I don't know if there's a market for like the uh, orange... Uh, instead of the OR15, it's the right. COR15. It all starts and it's to, a it's an orange model. I think that the Tone Master stuff, uh, I tried it out at Sweetwater, and I thought it held up in a really interesting way. Like it's not identical. Like mm-hmm. I, I shot out the the Super Reverb against the uh, you know a Tube Super Reverb. I almost called it real. They're both real, but one's digital, one's Tube. Uh, they're both physical objects that exist in our physical world, uh, <laughs> but. Like they were very, very close in a lot of ways and then different yeah. in a few ways. But damn it, you could pick up the Tone Master with one finger. I'm not joking. I picked it up with one finger and it was light enough that I could carry it around, you know, one handed around a city block from, you know, my my car trunk to a venue without, you know, hurting myself at all. Where like if I tried to carry a super reverb around a, a tube one. Mm hmm. No. Yeah. No, yeah, not I'm not going to make it. The fact that they're incredibly light is a is a huge marketable angle on those amps. Like it just is. And the fact that they look like the classic amplifier, I think there's there's a real market for those there. It's hard to imagine I think orange could pull it off. I think classic looking amps could pull it off marshall could pull it off you think see the marshall's, I think marshall's Mace, a space where i'm like i don't know if they could pull it off i don't know if the diehards are gonna people go for want that. the look though the people yeah. who want that look are aging and they don't want to carry heavy stuff but they still want to have a half stack yeah appearance i guess, on I guess it's, stage. Just, it's gotta sound good but i think the iconic amps could pull that off as long as the code is good Right. The the lightweight speakers they're using are good as long as it delivers 
the experience that people want. People want an ant because they want a physical experience. Mm-hmm. They want to physically feel air moving around them. They want to feel their molars rattling around in the back of their mouth. You know, uh, you get that looked at. <laughs> if you don't deliver that, then people will not be stoked on the product. The, the danger with that is when you start getting into, you know, the budget versions of it, some brand that maybe doesn't have the reputation as being a classic brand and isn't delivering something that has the classic appearance. And they're like, oh, here it is. This is a digital lamp, same as, you know, as the Tone Masters. We just did our own thing and here it is. And people get it and it doesn't connect on the same emotional, physical right. level. Right. It doesn't hit the nostalgia in the right way. It probably is because it's going to come from some no-name brand. It's probably not going to hit in the quality of sound sort of way. And that's, you know, that's the same way Solid State got such a bad, bad rap mm. is because it hit the the lower cost consumer market Yeah, where the higher end Solid State stuff definitely has its place in history. But the lower end stuff really gave it a bad rap. And I think... I think, yeah, there probably is a future. I mean, this prediction is probably not wrong. There probably is a future where we're going to see, you know, $200 and $300, you know, amps that have a single model in them and do the Tone Master thing and they're super mm-hmm. light, but it's from some company you've never heard of or some company that is, like, not iconic to you. And you can buy it, and it probably works fine, but it doesn't, in, like, invoke that same emotional, spiritual some com- response. Some company's going to go at it go after this it's gonna be and their model is gonna be uh uh <laughs> like p gonna, like pv like yeah if the shell of pv that's left over came out with a you know a digital bandit it's gonna it's gonna be no it's gonna be the pv 5150 sport right. sport edition <laughs> that's a good point and they told the technology is totally there that they could do a 5150 digital tone master style thing a half stack that's yeah. super lightweight but is that audience going to buy that? Like, I mean, PV is still a big brand name for that. Like, yeah. and the 5150 is still a br- big brand name for that. Like, I was I'm, talking to someone- I'm thinking more like crate level, you know? Yeah. You got to get that classic crate tone. It's a crate, the crate blue voodoo sport. <laughs> Number seven, everyone's a producer. I don't have anything to say. This is going to be all about home recording and home yeah. producing. Oh, cool. Record at home, guys. Make a podcast. Yeah. We believe in you. It's easy. If we yeah. can do it, you can definitely do it better than us. You just, just have sure. to be persistent and not quit, and eventually people will accept you and, and think that cl- you're important. click on the Sweetwater link and then buy a road, a road, whatever the yeah. hell that All thing is. All your home recording needs. Please click my links first. What please is just click the what the hell is that? A roadcaster. That's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember the name of the stupid thing. The roadcaster. It's, it is great. I do. No, it, no, the roadcaster has been fantastic. Is <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Steve just ham fistedly starts mashing buttons. Number eight. <laughs> Dolby Atmos takes center stage. What? I, I don't care. This is another production thing. Dolby Atmos is the is that the thing where you can like move your phone around? I don't I know think. what Atmos is, but I'm assuming it's it's, it's a surround it's sound. Dolby, thing. So it's a surround sound thing. Like I don't know anyone that has surround sound in their house. Like like it's always been an option for my entire life to set up homes like theater rigs and stuff that have surround sound, and I've never cared enough to explore that. Maybe I do know people who do it and they just don't brag about it, but that doesn't sound right. If you had it, you would brag about it, right? I think most consumers like to leave the theater at the theater. I mean, I think they like a bigger screen at home and I think they like to, you know, there's audio files out there and stuff. I think the thing with Dolby Atmos is it allows you to, I think do it like even possibly within the headphone, like because it becomes if it works the same way as like the Apple spatial audio, maybe I just don't know enough about it to um, know what they're even talking about. I think it's yeah, it's spatially coded substream added to Dolby True HD or Dolby Digital Plus. Da, 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 da. It's uh, I'm trying to read fast. Twenty four point one point ten channels. Steve isn't aware that he goes da 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 da. You did it. Da 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 da. I'm waiting for that whole video series to come out. Yeah, so you can do it with with headphones. 
uh, and basically create like it's like you're using binaural, but uh, mm-hmm. is that how that's pronounced? Yeah, I think so. Um, but it so it's kind of like along that line. I don't a hundred percent understand it. But. Well, we don't know what we're talking about. So number nine is gather around the piano. Oh yeah, I can't wait till you buy a piano. Before recorded audio, the way to fill a home with music was by playing the family piano. Pianos were beautiful centerpieces that brought people together. They were also unwieldy, expensive, temperamental, and in constant need of tuning. Thanks to digital advances and aesthetic improvements, the home piano is coming back. Minus the drawbacks, options like William's Allegro 3 Home Pack make it possible to own an instrument that's well-crafted with weighted keys and organic sound, regardless of budget or space constraints much like the latest audio interfaces modern pianos are using technology to connect players to a shared pass oh my gosh the copy on i this. think this one's goofy um not i don't i guess i don't know what the latest in piano technology is They're but the same by digital pianos guys just by just yeah. by bring the family together finally Buy a digital piano so your kids will hang out with you and sing songs with you. I'm just thinking, like, <laughs> we bought a, the Casio Privia, that, that uh, my wife's uh, piano, which I believe is also uh, fully weighted, yada, 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 for about the same price. This is $630, the one that they're tar- talking about. Um, and we bought that, like, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. This isn't new. This isn't, tw- like, right. If you want a digital piano, just go buy a digital piano. There's, I would believe, I would if if this. I mean, obviously, this list is about products that they're hoping to sell. If if they came out like, hey guys, we saw like a crazy uptick in like keyboard sales. The piano trend is coming. When the yeah. you know, all these people who bought keyboards because they're trying to learn, when they get serious, they're going to want weighted keys. They're going to want an upright style experience, and they're going to come buying these. No, they're just like, we hope that we sell. The, these digital pianos we hope number 10 dj's workflow 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 djing is all about the flow so if you uh want to start your own emo night in your own town you got to buy one of these things <laughs> call back to all last right. episode number 11 a more personal approach to drums. finally drums have been oh, so man. impersonal forever like the Honestly, like when I make a list in my mind right now of instruments that are impersonal, drums is the top. Like there's no physical contact. Like you're not putting your back into it. It's a lazy instrument. There's nothing personal about drums. Okay. There has been a rise in piccolo snares, for instance, an affordable way to change up a core sound of a drum kit with just one drum. There's been a core rise in piccolo snares since like, 1996 when 311's transistor came when, out when our band started our first band your favorite band like adam was going back and forth like trying to figure out if he was a piccolo snare boy or not yeah yeah that was in like 2003 it was like going between using a piccolo snare and using like a six inch classic uh like steel over brass i don't know or I, chrome over brass i don't know if i like this piccolo like i keep i keep going back and forth between this piccolo and this other thing and then he ended up using the deepest yeah darkest trash can slingerland snare he could find uh, i can't decide if i want to sound like 311 or led zeppelin <laughs> yeah, that was really it I don't know. Maybe there's an uptick on piccolo snares. I'm that, not, we I are, haven't we, been talking to drummers for a we long time. We are in a pop, like there is kind of like a pump, pop punk. Again, we talked about it last week, like this pop punk emo revival thing. So I don't oh think God, of, don't I don't think of words. piccolo as emo revival per se, but definitely pop punk. I, I do associate piccolo with ska. Yeah. A oh, little bit. Ju- just to add fuel to the fire. Number 12, electronic drums, not just for practice. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I feel like this, li- <laughs> this list is just telling us things that exist. Like, I don't know about, I don't know if these are trends, guys. Like, saying saying that electronic dr- drums are like, oh, here's a hot new trend, electric drums. In what way? Like, I feel like, like if, if this is a list of trends that should be like, oh, here's the... Here is like something that's going to change electronic drums. Yeah. It's not just like, hey, electronic drums, they exist and people are cool with it now. Like some players, okay. some players might have even picked up a pack of signature sounds from a favorite drummer. 
increasingly common in the world of e-kits and virtual instruments. Expect the word to spread in 2022. Electronic drums are not just for practice anymore. Wasn't it... Um, was it Neil Peart who had like a hybrid kit? So I think he had like live cymbals and then electronic like tom and snare and then i forget i I don't maybe it wasn't him but like the idea of using like a hybrid acoustic electric kits is is uh like classic large kit whatever number 13 there's always been there's always been people who add in like you know the electronic pads on the side for various sound effects and stuff and number 13 is like like you didn't they didn't think anyone was going to make it to the bottom of this list (laughs) the world of percussion gets bigger Hey guys, tongue drums, hand pans, singing bowls, kalimbas. Th- Did you know you could get a thumb piano at Guitar Center? Hey, they've got those bags full of shakers and they're shaped like fruit. What? Guys, guys, go to Guitar Center. There's other stuff you can make music with other than guitars keyboards electric drums and basses all i'm gonna say is uh we bought a tongue two years ago so ahead of the curve there suck it ahead of the curve steve i'm a trend setter (laughs) well i've got an electric kazoo so deal with (laughs) this list was this is not predictions this is just like hey remember these products exist I do, uh, I do like they what they end with, which is uh, if it sounds good, it is good. Basically, saying like, just isn't go. that just a take on Andrew Zimmern's catchphrase <laughs> from from Bizarre Foods or whatever? If it tastes good, eat it. Like that's what what if they it, said. I don't know. I, if I, it sounds good, play it. But oh, it's just like right. yeah, it's like just go, just go make music. Yeah, whatever. Just stop. Uh, and a link. To, I was hoping that list would be more exciting. I was I was hoping for did like. Do you know Guitar Center has a demo channel with one million subscribers? Good for them. Also, they recommend they highly recommend Josh Scott of JHS Pedals. What does he even know about gear? Nothing. He knows. I talked to him personally. He knows the whole time I asked him about gear. He knew nothing. Now Josh knows. He's a so lot. he's so tall. I can't even hear anything he's saying. <laughs> Just goes right over your head. <laughs> <laughs> all right this first ad. i was just like i'm I feel, no, we're, I was we're hope, still talking about i this. was hoping for bold predictions of the future i was gonna it, i thought it was gonna be like electric amp uh, guitar amps are gonna be powered by crystals yeah yeah well it's time like, travel guys it can't it's be coming. that bold because it's 2022 prediction. Know, but still so, like the, most of these predictions were about as bold as you know, somewhere around May, uh, Business Insider or Forbes or whatever, uh, Guitar World is going to post an article saying, like, is Guitar Center going out of business? <laughs> <laughs> so the last one should be, Guitar Center will still be in business December 2022. <laughs> Bold prediction. Uh, no, I, I, I was, I was, you know, I know it wouldn't ever happen. I was hoping for, like, number 12, complete economic collapse. Everyone makes ukuleles out of human skulls. <laughs> All right, this first Also, ad. listen in for next week's episode. Welcome to 60 Cycle Home, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, break, reviewing podcast brought to you by Guitar Center. <laughs> oh, man. You know, we have a pretty good relationship with Sweetwater. Yeah. So, Guitar Center, you got to come in with a spicy bid. That's all I'm saying. Hot. Hot. You got to come in real hot if you want to buy a sound. I'm not saying we're not for sale. <laughs> Saying, gotta come in hot is I'm all not I'm saying, saying. I'm not saying we're not for sale. I'm just saying all of our affiliate links go to Sweetwater. So. <laughs> not all of them, but I'd prefer to people that use this, the Sweetwater affiliate links. All right. Um, uh, oh, man, this, this is a Snake Pit guitar. It was sent by Nick Orman, 1977 Gibson Les Paul Snake Pit slash signature serial number SL. Probably stands for slash probably five X. Then it says Yamano. I don't know why it says Yamano. Uh, I don't know what that means. What do you think about this guitar, Ryan? Do we need to describe it? This guitar is red. It's got kind of like a flamey thing. It's got white pickup rings. 
Uh, it's got the snake pit art on there, which honestly, coming uh, from a graphic designer slash illustrator artsy guy here, uh-huh. I actually really like that art. I've always been a fan of that art. I think it's a fun cartoon. It almost looks... Is it on top of the finish? I it think it is. I think it's, it's painted on top of the finish. Uh, but I've always I've always been a fan. No, well, ever since I first saw it, I've been a fan of that artwork just because it is... It's cartoony, but it's really done really well, and I think it really captures a fun vibe. Uh, they want nearly a hundred grand for this ninety nine thousand five hundred dollars plus five hundred. They want a hundred grand for it. Five hundred shipping. Jeez, this is in Norwalk. This is actually maybe they're just hope they're just like make an offer, and they wanted to make sure it was maxed out. Like, hey, uh, it's got snake inlay neck. But here's what I want to know: Does it come with a dog? Oh, there's a dog in there's the picture dog. you're looking at. I was like, uh, is there something I'm missing about dogs? There's a dog. That is a cute dog. It's kind of weird to me. It, do you think it's an age thing that the hardware is like a mix of nickel and chrome? Now that's a good question. It does look like the hardware is aged. It also looks like the strings are loose on it. Look at that low E string there. Yeah. It looks a little it's bit a little loose weird. to me. Um, I honestly... I don't doubt that these things are worth money. I oh, mean, look at how worn the Gibson yeah. heads, like the logo is. Like this thing has been played, capital P-L-A-Y-E-D. Did I spell that right? I spelled that right, right? P-L-A-I-D, yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but man, I don't know what they actually cost. I really doubt it's worth a hundred grand. Like I would guess... I would guess 15 max. I mean, for what it's worth, I'm, I Googled them and I'm not even seeing. I mean, it is a low serial, right? SL zero five. No, uh, is that the, was that the, I mean, yeah, I guess. Right. That's what that means. Slash hit us up. Let us know. (laughs) Is this worth what this person is asking? Here's one. And now it's sold. I don't I can't let me see Wowzers, if I 25 grand figure out how long ago this was listed five years ago uh for 25 grand and it has the art on it it does I wonder if it's the same one I don't know this was sold by Sam Ash what's the uh, serial number no because it's a blue case oh uh, the case is different that's this how is you number know. 28 they couldn't possibly change the case that's number 28 that's a lower serial this is a higher serial that's why it's worth Multiple times more. SL028 versus SL05. Part of me is like, like, I get that Gibson fans are used to paying a lot more for their stuff. Yeah, I get that Gibson fans are weird. And can, they're kind of weird in that direction. That, that, that very high prices. These five, are five digit prices for. For guitars. These originally sold for five grand in 1996, 1997. There were a hundred made. But it's also baffling to me that that one could be worth 25 grand. Trogley did a counterfeit one on his program. 25 grand. And this is from Slash's Snake Pit era. This is not from like, I would almost understand 25 grand, a hundred grand. For the guitar that he played in Guns N' Roses, maybe it was in music videos, it was a stage guitar for him. I could see someone who's got money what now is, what is to the, throw around to be like, yeah, I'm going to get that Guns N' Roses guitar. I don't right. I don't personally have any nostalgia for the Snake Pit era Slash's stuff. Slash's Snake Pit is a super group. I didn't know this. Right. I'm going to be educated right now. Uh, I vaguely know a little bit of it. Uh, like I get, like don't have any songs in my head connected oh, okay. to it. Okay, so it's uh, Guns N' Roses. So it's Slash, Guns N' Roses drummer and guitarist. So Matt Sorum, Gilby Clark, and Allison Chains bassist Mike Inez, and former Jellyfish. Who, who's Jellyfish? Do you know? He used to be a Jellyfish. He's not a Jellyfish anymore. Uh, Steve. Live guitarist Eric Dover. Yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar with that band. Vocals. Someone's going to get mad at us because we don't know who Jellyfish Eric is. Eric Dover is Ben's brother. <laughs> Shut up. No, it's a super, it was a super group sort of thing, which is fine. It's cool. Like, I remember when that was all going on. 
I don't think I've ever once in the eight years of us doing this podcast run into someone who's like, oh man, I just really love Snake Pit era slash stuff. Yeah. And we've seen people talk about all kinds of stuff that they love that's outside of our wheelhouse, which is great. We love having a you know diverse group of people in our uh, in our community. How much, how many freaking times did Trogley make a video about a fake snake pit? Probably every time that he could get good clicks on it. It was at least twice, three times. That that means three, he's, there's three videos. That like means that. he's either trying sincerely to buy a real one and blowing a lot of money doing it, or he is intentionally buying counterfeits to make content at fifteen thousand dollars a piece or something. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know a lot about this guitar. I don't know anything about this band slash the Snake Pit. Kind of just don't know anything. And that's okay. Not we about this, at least. We don't have to know anything. But the the price is the prices are the outrageous, price right? seems bonkers. If Sam Ash sold one five years ago for twenty five k, then I could see this maybe being like thirty five k now. But this a hundred grand is is bonkers. I feel like a hundred grand. You're right. Like a hundred grand is like Guns and Roses. Got to be the Appetite for Destruction guitar, which right. isn't, which may or may not even actually be a Gibson, right? Like I could see someone paying. 50 grand and up for the BC rich that slash used to play before he started playing a Les Paul. Cause he used to okay, play, yeah, right. He used to play BC riches before playing the Les Paul. Right. In guns and roses. If my memory serves me correctly, people who want to correct me, let me know in the comments. Like I could see that being like, Oh man, this was the guitar he played before. And I'm going to pay 50 grand. I'm going to pay 70 grand. I could see that happening, but not for this. I don't get it. I don't get it. Someone enlighten us. Why, why is a snake pit guitar worth so much just money? Just because it's slash, man. It's just slash. It's slash. It's just slash. Mark and Nisi, hit us up. Let us know. Yeah. All right. This uh, episode is brought to you by Big Ear Pedals. They make the woodcutter. Mm-hmm. They make the L. They also the make reverb. They make the Albi. Other stuff that's coming out. So you want to make sure you go follow them on all their social media. Yeah, they got a new pedal coming out, but we're not telling you about it. Do they have an email list? They do have an email list. Go get I'm on the email pretty list. Sure. If they have one, get on it. Make sure you're up to date with all the social media stuff and all the email lists with Big Ear because something's coming. You can get all that info at BigEarPedals.com. Go that's check right. them out. Got anything new, man? Uh, I don't know, man. I've been fighting raccoons. Oh, yeah. I've got this pond in my backyard, and I've gone for years without the raccoons doing the thing, their thing to it, and they recently discovered how to get into the pond, and it's just been a solid week of them getting in there every night doing their thing. And uh, I don't know. My fish are gone. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> that's, that's my what's new. What's your you what's put new? Like, if you put some puffer fish in there, they won't. I get some piranhas or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I was going to do puffer fish, I'd have to convert it into a saltwater pond. That's true. Somehow. So yeah, maybe some piranhas or maybe so, uh, like a snapping turtle. Get a big old oh, snapping yeah. turtle in there. Yeah. That'll take care of the raccoons and your children's fingers. <laughs> we don't, I don't encourage my children to stick their fingers in the pond oh. as it is like that water is gross. Just because you don't encourage them to do it doesn't mean they don't do it. It would be fun to have a big old snapping turtle in there. Put some catfish in there. Live in the bottom. Big old catfish. Yeah. Or I could just give up on having a pond and accept defeat. Fill it with concrete. Yeah, just fill it with concrete. Turn it into the world's smallest, like, skating pool. <laughs> <laughs> just empty it out and skate a little skateboard around in there. Yeah, dude, I saw this. Uh, I watched this uh, video the other day that was just a dude, like, 30 something year old dude, like who built a full scale, like probably this size of this table and some more like tech deck. Oh my gosh. Scenario. You could do that. You could I interviewed for a job at tech deck to be like a tech, a deck tester. No, to work in their kite division. <laughs> they had a kite division. Yeah. <laughs> because you think about tech deck. Yeah. Yes. They make little plastic skateboards that you skate uh-huh, with your fingers. Uh-huh. The real business there is kites licensing 
because they were licensing all the designs for the bottom of the boards. Oh. So they were licensing all the graphics from all these skate companies to put on the bottom of these little plastic boards. And since they were so good at licensing, they started licensing other stuff. So they were making kites that had licensed brands and stuff on them. All right. And so they needed graphic designers to work in the kite division. And I interviewed for it, and it didn't go well. I didn't get the job. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Local company, though. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're up in Escondido. Or they were. I don't know where they are now. Probably out of business now. No, I think they still exist. What? Or some or some company like them exists. I don't know. All that stuff is still out there. You can still buy it. All right. <laughs> okay, I've been thinking about this a while. Here's my what's new. It's All right. Not, it's not really what's new, but it's a, it's a thing I've been thinking about. So uh, this channel early on uh, was... Hold on, let me finish. I need to finish this. Sure, before sure. Before we get into this. This tequila is excellent, by the way. I, I need to buy uh, more of this when this runs out, which might take us, you know, another 20 episodes at this I should, rate. I should switch. I, I have only had that tequila once. Tequila Ocho. I've been um, really enjoying it. So I've been thinking about early on, you know, we were frequently lambasted uh, for not knowing how to say tremolo. Mm. Tremolo? Uh, tremolo. Tremolo? Trem- well, because I think we both said tremolo. Like we just right. moved the move the emphasis. To the wrong syllable. To the wrong syllable. Mm. And, uh, and so that's that I kind of understand because tremolo, like, I guess there's really only one way to say it. And it's a unique word, right? Right. Tremolo. There's no other word like tremolo. I'm calling out. Here we go. Flange army. Flange army. Whatever. Flange? I, uh, I, is it? I don't know if it's a flange pedal, a flanger pedal, or a flanger pedal. Which, I think I don't, it's supposed to be flange. I don't know which one's wrong. I sincerely think it's supposed to be flange. And so people say, well, you know, flange, it's like flange, flange, whatever. It's like the mechanical component. Right. But I looked that up, and it, according to, like, Oxford or whatever, uh, it's acceptable both ways. But that's neither here nor there. Uh because here's the issue I have is if it's flange, okay, let's say it's flange, which I guess would make sense because it's home on the range and Eric Clapton changed the world. Home, and home on the flange. So that makes sense if it's flange. But there are like words that I was thinking about like that have that spelling that are ange words, uh, like orange, like the color. Right. It's orange. Yeah. Maybe it should be flunge, like orange. Flange. Orange, flange. Flange. Flor- flange. 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 Trying to work that one Flanger, out. Flanger, flanger, flange. A rain. Oh, no, a range is range. Flanger. It's a flanger. 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 Maybe it is. Is it flange? I, in my head, like people. The more you think about it, the weirder it gets, and then it does. it's not even a real word anymore. Yeah, I, I just, in my head, like, we always said flange, and people be like, no, it's flange, because it's like. Oh, your fingers are phalanges, right? It might be phalange. I I prefer to say flange though. I I'm just saying, like I think, I think people should cut us a little slack because I think we should cut everyone a little this slack. This is a word that can go both ways, you know. It can go a lot of different ways as long as you understand what the person is trying to say to you when they say a word. Like you don't need to correct people's pronunciation. Like, if you understand it, then you understand it. Like, a lot of people learn words by reading them, not by hearing them these days. And so people say things in different yeah. ways. There's also regional dialects, which are completely legitimate. Unless you're from the South. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Actually, I, we, were, we were actually talking no, about that at work the other day. Southern, Southern people have a beautiful way of yeah. talking. The, the flange and flange thing. Southern though, Californian was like, people. Yeah. Uh, the flange and flange thing was, like, really... Like, I was just thinking about it, and I was thinking about all the other words that are, like, like you said, change and flange and arrange and, and whatever. Derange. But derange. Uh, but also, like, words that kind of don't have that, like, that are ange. I, I feel like there were other ones, but all of a sudden, like, I'm just, like, my brain is not you know thinking what? of any of them. My, my son, who, who is seven, has been learning to read, and yeah. he's, he's doing well. I'm proud of him. Um, but he, it, every night, um, he's supposed to do half an hour of reading with us mm-hmm. and that's a lot of reading. It is a lot of reading, but you know, we're trying to get him caught up because of COVID times and stuff like that. And right. In second grade and whatnot. Um, so we sit with him and, you know, I, I watch him read a book and every now and then he hits a word where he like struggles with it. And I look at the word and I'm like, 
Yeah, no wonder you can't say that word. That's that's spelled crazy. Like, how is anyone supposed to figure that out without memorizing it? Like, some words are weird and bonkers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they don't make any sense at all. And I'm like, I don't I don't fault you for one second for not knowing how to say this word. My, I wish my, I could think of an example right now. Well, my favorite is, and this is not a second grade book word, but my favorite is, uh, well, one of my favorites is, uh, of course, uh, Colonel. Right. Uh, how are you supposed to know? Not Colonel like corn, but Colonel like the, you know, the general. Like general. Right? But, I, yeah. but I thought of that because the other one that's like really messed up is Lieutenant. Oh, yeah. Because Lieutenant in like 19th century English had an F in it, which is why in the British military, they're lieutenants. And at some point they just like dropped the F, but they kept the pronunciation. Right. And it's just like, are, are you freaking kidding me? All right, let's move on to guitar stuff. Flange. People are going to get mad. Steve, people are going to get mad if we divert from guitar content at all for any amount of time, for any reason hey, whatsoever. Speaking of guitar content, this episode is brought to you by Chase Bliss Audio. Go to chaseblissaudio.com with the digital brain and analog heart. Chase Bliss Audio makes pedals that are more creative than you are. They have a mood for every mood. Go check out the mood. All right, this next ad was, was sent. a fast sponsorship. That's the way they should be, right? <laughs> that is how they should it be. It is the way they should be. We've been giving them too much sponsorships. Really, it's not we that have. we've been giving them too much. It's just like sometimes you just got to get in and get out. You guys get it. Chase Bliss is awesome. You're going to buy one someday. You, you, you've you made the promise by committing to watch a show. We know that you've promised that you're going to buy a Chase Bliss pedal someday. So thank you. This was sent by Mark DeBruin. Here's an ad for a kit to build a double neck, six string and 12 string SG. The catch is that the kit includes neither the body nor the necks. It comes with no instructions. So I'm not sure whether you're supposed to find a double neck SG body or cut two regular SG bodies up to make one double neck body. Uh, here's the ad translation. Have fun with this self built SG double neck guitar, necks and body not included with six and 12 strings. An example of what the result may look like can be seen in one of the photos. The assembly isn't really difficult, but you would need some skill and a basic knowledge of luthiery. Instructions aren't included, but it's mostly straightforward. Uh, so, it's not hard to put this together. You just have to be a luthier. You yeah, know, you this, just have to, you just have to be a guitar builder and then you can just do it. So don't, don't worry about it too. Don't, don't think about it too hard. If, if you know how to build a guitar, you're going to be able to build this. Uh, yeah, the everything's kit, included except for the entire guitar. The kit includes large <laughs> bolts and neck plates. So it seems this is for a bolt on. This is again, Mark's commentary. So it seems this is for a bolt on neck construction. All the hardware looks pretty basic. All the express stuff. Uh, I would agree. And in fact, the picture that is in the, that's like, Oh, look at this. Looks like, Something from AliExpress or yeah. GFS or something, you know. And uh, he says the only thing that's specific is the uh, is the little pick guard piece that goes in between where the switches are located. So basically, what you are buying is all of the hardware to build one six string guitar and one twelve, and one string, 12 guitar. string guitar. You could put them together if you want. Like you don't have yeah. to. You, you can make a 12 string if you want. You could make two guitars if you want. Honestly, like you've got with all the tuners and stuff, you've you actually got enough tuners to make three guitars. So maybe make three guitars. I got a I got a better idea. Make one 18 string oh guitar. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So what what I'm imagining happened here is someone bought a kit. Yeah. And they're like, I just want the body and the necks. I don't I've got my own stuff. Like this stuff is cheap. I don't want to use the pickups, the hardware, whatever. I'm going to go premium with the hardware for some reason. And so they kept the necks and the body and they're like, well, I got to sell all this stuff. This stuff is valuable. I paid for it. Who the heck is going to buy the hardware and parts kit for a double neck guitar that was, that started out as a kit without the necks and the body. This makes zero sense he should have he should have parted this out at least to be for two different guitars and just skipped the pick guards that let you know it was from a 12 from, yeah. a, from a two neck it's like oh here's some guitar parts i've got one for a 12 string guitar i've got one for a regular six string guitar like like this is this, this is, is up wild. for seven or for 155 euros that price sucks <laughs> 
You're saying it's you know you can tell that this is some sort of trash import kit that's probably not great. This I just like how you're like this sucks. No, this guy wants to charge 155 euros for four trash humbuckers. This is balls. You know, a bunch, uh, you know, a pair of bridges and stop tails, and some knobs and pots and some tuners, and he wants to charge 155 bucks for junk parts. You know. Like, oh, you know what? This you know how you can really tell this is only to, designed to make one guitar. How? Actually, a few, a couple different things. One, there's only one control panel plate. Uh, but more importantly, it only comes with one Radio Shack cable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't sell this two guitars because there's only one Radio Shack cable, guys. No, this should have been like he should have been like selling a pair of humbuckers, fifteen dollars. Selling a pair of humbuckers, fifteen dollars. Selling a set of tuners for a twelve string. Yeah, but you're never going to get one hundred and fifty five euros that way. I know you're going to have to do extra work, but no one's going to buy this. No one's going to buy this. You're not wrong. Like, there's no reason to buy this. I would just like you to be more right. Anyone who's buying parts for a 12-string guitar when they already have the neck and the body is going to be buying good parts for it. Right. They're not going to be buying the cheap parts that came with the kit. Well, we assume these are cheap parts. I think we can tell just by looking at it that these are cheap parts. There's nothing about these parts that's jumping out to me as exceptional. Like, look at those little pots. Look at those big box switches. Look at the Radio Shack cable. Look at those. <laughs> look at those humbuckers. Tell me those humbuckers are good humbuckers. Those look like those look like a set of uh, Epiphone WM. Shut up! I'm just I'm just making stuff up now. <laughs> um, like a, you know, like a, a stop tail and a, a tunomatic bridge. Who can tell if it's good or bad from JPEG photos or whatever? Oh, I'm but sure, I'm sure they're perfectly import. So much, of, so much of this is like, yeah, this checks all the boxes of just normal, cheap budget. This was a two hundred and fifteen dollar kit on Amazon. Sorts of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. And he's trying to he's trying to recoup all his money, the majority of his money, by selling the parts when he bought the kit just to get the necks in the body. Like, it's not gonna happen, dude. All right, what next? Housekeeping. If you're interested in supporting this Clean malarkey, uh, maybe someday you want to contribute to buying another bottle of booze for this place, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash 60 cycle humcast, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the production of this show. And that's all we're going to say. We're just going to move on hey, to I this was, last. I was thinking, Steve. Oh, great. Should we tell people that they can start mailing stuff to us again? Oh, yeah. If you want to send us mail, we're going to put the address back in the description. I'll put it up here on the screen, too. Like, we're not doing a contest. Just like, hey, you want to send us stuff? You want to send stuff for us to open on the I'm show? Gonna, okay, I'm going to commit you to something. Okay. Uh, I I will try to find it. I want to, I want to do this. Uh, we have a lot of empty space back here, and something I've talked to you about that I think would be really cool, so we're going to try it out at least once, is I want to get, like, a 20 by 20 canvas, 20-inch... 20 by 20 inch Sounds or like a 30 craft. by 30. And I want to cover that thing in stickers that our listeners send to us. And we'll put it back here on the wall. I had a better idea than that. And I don't a know if I'm ready. Better to, idea. I don't know if I'm ready to do it yet, but I had the idea of having a guitar. Oh, right. That, this. that we put stickers on them as we get them from, from you guys. And the moment that it's completely covered in stickers, like the finish is completely covered in stickers, and we give the guitar away somehow. All right. So, I don't know if we're going to do it, but that's an idea. So we're going to put up... Uh, so we got a couple ideas. So if you're in a band, you've got stickers. Right. Throw throw one in an envelope and send it to us, and, you we'll, wanna, and we'll do something with it. You want to send us, like, a Valentine's card? You want to, like... Email us like a hot sauce you made. Email us. You want to mail us a hot sauce you made. You want to send us like your band's EP or something like whatever you want to do. We got, we had a blast getting physical mail from people. And if you have the desire to do that, we're ready to accept it. I paid for another six months of the PO nice. box. So we were, pay we're paying for it. Might as well accept some stuff. If you guys want to send it anyways, like you don't have to send anything, but if you want to, there's the address. All right. Last ad, Steve. Yep, this ad was sent by Marion Versher. Ver I can't say that. Hi, Ryan and Steve. I just <laughs> found this weird and wonderful Telecaster on the Dutch classified site Mark Plots. I think that's the same site that Mark uses. I wonder if these guys know each other. Maybe. 
you know, because like all uh, all these people know each other. Right? You know, all Dutch people all know du- each other. All Dutch people are the same person. They're not the same person. They're just from the same family. Yeah, uh, I'm. They're I, all neighbors. No, this is a different website. They all this is, they all meet together and trade uh, tulip bulbs. Okay, so he says. Uh, uh, the description says Fender Telecaster, but is it actually a Fender? It has an MIJ Fender neck and an unbranded made in China neck plate. The serial number I can't seem to find anywhere. Tuner situation is the weirdest stuff I've ever seen. Also, does this have microwave knobs? The guitar was put up by a thrift store with no asking price, and the highest bid is 150 euros at the time of this. 150 euros, I feel like the MIJ neck alone is worth that? Yeah, I would agree. But what is going on here? What is that thing on the on the butt end of the guitar? Is some sort of industrial clamp? What? I, I don't know what that is. What is that? Like, there's so much else to look at on this guitar, but what is that? Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what that is. This is a... Uh, but it looks heavy. This is an MIJ neck. This may have been um, from like a 70s style Telecaster, like right. a 70s reissue. It only has four of the six original tuners, which is unfortunate. Oh, uh, you can replace those tuners. It doesn't look like... At least I don't think the wood has been mangled in any no, significant no. way. Um, but yeah, the, the two replacement tuners are absolutely, uh, strange. Yeah. Like, uh, and they don't look like they're attached anywhere near correctly at all. The, the body is bizarre. It actually looks like it could be decent wood. Um, no, th- I think this could clean up. I think this could clean up. It's got the right amount of relicing that like whatever screw holes are left when you remove this mystery clamp thing. Um, will probably blend into everything else that's going on. Is it, you know, you want a Telecaster to be a little bit beat up. You throw a fresh pit guard on here, and uh, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna be an attractive Telecaster. I actually do like those knobs. I don't know where those knobs came from. They might be from a microwave or a toaster oven. I was getting like um, I was getting like a uh, like portable heater vibes from them. Like maybe mm-hmm. like an electric radiator vibe from from those knobs. I, I wish they were a little bit smaller and then like I would put those knobs on a guitar for sure. So this now I'm wondering if this neck plate is pr- appropriate for this guitar. Well, the neck plate says made in China. The neck says made in Japan. Right. But the body, we don't know where the body's from. Uh, so the Y in serial number, the possibly the Y in made in China serial number is a, uh, Fender or is a Squire like a Chinese Squire model uh, would have the CY though this are not CY the Y in the Y in seven I'm a little you know anything could have sure happened to this one. guitar it could be a fully parts guitar where every part came from somewhere else the body like I said the body looks interesting the hardware looks like it could be Squire from that same like oh sure nineties era so I think the neck plate and the hardware and the body could be like a butter like a this could have been a butterscotch like affinity telecaster sure. that somebody slapped a made in Japan neck on and then like at some point drug the freaking body around town behind their truck. I still say for 150 euro it's worth it for the neck. Like the neck looks it's it's well worn in certain places but it looks like a good parts neck to yeah. me. I think this guitar would be really cool. It doesn't to just take all the nonsense off. Yeah. Oh, totally. Get the right to get the last two right tuners. Take this nonsense off the thing. The microwave knobs are both like interesting and weird. You know, I would love to see those knobs on an amp. Yeah. Those would be Um, really cool amp knobs. And I would say like, just take, I think this guitar would look really cool without, if you got rid of the metal stuff and just like shined it. I think it would, would you do a pick, would you do a pick card where you leave it alone? I might leave it alone. The the classic would be to be a put a uh, would be to pick, oh, I can't talk all of a sudden. The tequila's working. I would be to put a black 
pit guard on here for your classic butt scotch yeah. telly tone, you know, T O A N. I'm kind of um, I'm kind of digging the way it looks without it. I I, I kind of would like to see this with a tort pit guard. I think for me, I think the amount of damage to the body breaks up what would otherwise be like just solid butterscotch and because with the solid butterscotch and like black a black pit guard it's kind of like the black pit guard creates a negative space right in the middle of this field of butterscotch but because you have the body the upper part of the body and then even the lower part of the body kind of has all these mangled spots it's kind of already breaking up those lines you know i like the way you're talking uh what would be kind of fun is to hack in like a Cabernita pit guard, like just on the lower horn, just, okay. just a lower horn pit yeah. guard. Yeah. So it's like clearly aftermarket. There's clearly holes from where the original pit guard was like this guitar has been mangled, but then you've taken it a new direction and you just have a little bit of pit guard to break it up a little bit. All right. I can and then see you, that. you leave that neck pickup hole kind of open and raw. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This has heart. It does. No, this this Did guitar's it, got a really it's got a really strong vibe underneath the this. It's kind of you know what this this guitar is. What is this guitar? This is this is seven of nine before they get most of the, oh Borg, the Borg stuff off of her. It's got a bunch of Borg. You. It's got a bunch of Borg stuff on her. Uh, you got to get you got to get the Borg stuff off. There will be a little bit left. You'll be able to tell that this guitar was a Borg, but you know there's a good guitar under there, and it's going to be a good uh, addition to the to the crew. Oh, Martin, uh, Mar, 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 Marjan actually sent an update email that I did not see saying, I found out the serial number corresponds to a 1997 Squire Telecaster made by the Yako factory, which is in Taiwan. That tracks. Uh, which that lines up with what I found. What I want to know is, will they... Oh, it's gone. Oh, Maybe it's, it's sold. Someone bought it because they probably said, hey, there's a neck. Oh, man. I'm going to buy that neck. I wanted to know if they would ship to the United States. Oh, my gosh. It would not be worth it after shipping, dude. It probably cost you like 100 bucks to ship that. Yeah. Think of the guitars you could get for 250 bucks here. You yeah. could get a, a Mexican. I mean, you could get a Japanese Telecaster neck in better condition for 250 I'm Yeah, sure. but I want the whole thing. I know. You I want to do that pit guard thing. Yeah. Or no pit guard thing. All right. Uh, this song I should write down some notes this song was sent by patrick kenny he says hey guys i have a new ep coming out soon under my artist named kipsy wanted to shoot you over the first track off that release played a reverend double agent through a chase bliss brothers into an orange dual tear for primary tones used a copper sound polaris for the chorusy stuff love you guys keep doing what you're doing pat looking forward to hearing it when steve pressed the fight there we go
good production value on that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, really well put together. Uh, you know, like there's a definitely like emo uh, aesthetic to the vocals, mm -hmm. which is not my thing. I've said that before, but I think it's well done. But at certain points, especially in the beginning, uh, there's there's I was almost picking up like a uh, a tripping daisy polyphonic spree kind of element. Huh. In the vocals. So is there that influence in there? Let us know in the comments. I thought it sounded good though. Yeah, I liked it. Reminded me, uh rem reminded me, like you said, uh kind of that emo pop punk. It reminded me a lot of brand new. Sure. So I liked it. All right. Bye everyone. Stay grounded. <laughs>